This is the most overpowered portable toothpaste dispenser ever created. Except that's not actually why I built it. We've all heard the saying that you can't put toothpaste back into the tube. But being the guy who made a toaster that turns toast back into bread, I figured I was also the guy to make this happen. But I wasn't. It, it turns out that a guy named Tyler Bell actually did this last year on his channel. But if you ask me, Tyler didn't take this too far enough. While Tyler's experiment showed that a vacuum is a great way to pull toothpaste back into the tube, his setup was a bit too large and difficult for the average consumer to use. Plus, I mean, who has an extra vacuum pump lying around their bathroom? What the world needs is a handheld toothpaste manipulation device, capable of both dispensing and retracting toothpaste at the touch of a button. So let's take a look at how this bad boy works, and just what kind of allegorically contradictory toothpaste tricks it's secretly capable of. The two base components are still a vacuum chamber and a vacuum pump. Here's why. When you press on a toothpaste tube, because the tube is sealed in a container, pressure builds until it has nowhere to go but out of the opening. The more you squeeze, the more that comes out, until the pressure outside the tube equals the pressure inside the tube. Going backwards, though, is much more difficult. Pulling on the tube generates some negative pressure, but another part of the tube will cave in to equalize. Basically, you would need a bunch of little hands pulling all around the tube all at once in order to counteract this effect. And that is exactly what the vacuum chamber does. When the pump pulls the air out of the chamber, the pressure inside the toothpaste tube is suddenly higher than the air around it, causing all sides of the tube to expand outwards and pulling whatever's at the mouth of the tube back inside it. And if we reverse the process and pressurize the chamber, well, I think you get the idea. Now we'll get into the build details on this frankly super easy project later in the video, but first I'd like to show you just what this thing can do. ability to rapidly switch between pressure and vacuum makes this device exceptional at not only sucking up toothpaste, but laying it down fast and thick. But how fast is fast? And how do you even measure something like toothpaste application speed? It's actually quite simple. You use a unit measurement called toothbrushes per second. And that's why I bought a hundred toothbrushes. For science. How long will it take to apply toothpaste to 100 toothbrushes? We're about to find out. Yes, the toothpaste distribution was a little lopsided, but every single toothbrush received toothpaste in just over three seconds. And although this device absolutely does suck up toothpaste, it takes a little longer than laying it down. It's more difficult to suck up the toothpaste because the moment that the opening is exposed to any air, it immediately fills with air instead of the toothpaste. But practice makes perfect. Then I had an epiphany. The reason this device can put toothpaste back into the tube is because it creates suction within the tube, but the tube itself has no way of knowing whether it's sucking up toothpaste or any other substance like hot sauce or syrup or... No. No. It can't be. I mean, you think one way for so long, like staring out a small window in your room, you almost forget that there are other windows and other rooms, and then something comes and sh shatters your whole reality, and the funniest thing happens. Instead of holding the broken pieces in terror, you, you find joy. Anyways, yes, this is ridiculous, but I, I have to know. Can I fill a toothpaste tube with beans? If we can put beans in toothpaste, if we can have a tube of toothpaste full of beans, how is air getting in there? <laughs> the most disgusting sound. Get the air. Oh, mostly bean juice. I want more actual beans. Okay, let's see what we have. Um, I think there's a bean. There's some. There's beans in there. Yeah, there's a bean. There's a piece of a bean. The smell. The smell is. Uh, how would you describe the smell? You're trying not to smell it. That's a good idea. Beans. Bean toothpaste. So how did I build this, and what does Tyler think of it? Well, I'll tell you right after I tell you about today's sponsor, Aquafresh Beans. Just kidding. It's Thangs. 
Bangs is a massive database of over 5.4 million indexed models. Designing a part on your 3D printer? Fangs will help you search for geometrically similar parts that you can use instead to save time. Every model they have is available to view in an augmented reality, without the need for a separate app on your phone. Fangs is still adding new features like their Alpha Workspace feature, which is a visual revision control system and collaboration tool. In this modern collaborative creator world, Fangs is a wonderful tool to have in your pocket for every build that you tackle. Fangs accepts more than 28 different 3D models in CAD file formats. Now I personally don't do any 3D printing yet, but I use my CNC machine constantly, and I just uploaded this DXF file to my Fangs account. So go click the link below to download it, or just to check out Fangs for yourself. It seriously helps my channel a ton when you support the people supporting me. So Tyler, what do you think of the device? It's, I love it, it's right up my alley. It's like an everyday task or device turned super ridiculous and impractical. I knew that when I made that video that there was definitely stuff left on the table and I think you took it to the next level. Two, two thumbs up. Now people in the comments are always asking me for more details on how I build things. And all I have to say to that is, Okay. I started by cutting the two inch acrylic tube long enough to fit the toothpaste, then modified some PVC caps to fit the ends. The vacuum pump has a vacuum connector and a pressure connector, and they don't change even if the pump is spinning backwards. Because of this, both are connected to their own three-way valve. When I push forward, the pressure valve connects the pump to the tank, and the vacuum valve is left open to the air. When I push rewind, the vacuum valve is connected to the tank, and the pressure valve is left open to the air. There is a third valve connected to the chamber which closes when either button is pushed and then opens once no buttons are pushed. This purges either the pressure or vacuum in the chamber, returning it to atmospheric pressure so that the toothpaste stops flowing. I used two separate relays connected to each button in order to send isolated power to the pump and the pump power is connected to the light up accessories as well as another relay that turns off the purge valve since all I had on hand was a normally closed valve. This chamber only works if there are no leaks, so I sealed up everything with a generous portion of hot glue. The control panel is an anodized blue business card that you can buy in packs on Amazon, and the whole thing is powered by a small 3S lithium polymer battery with a voltmeter attached to make sure I don't go under voltage. So there you have it, toothpaste back in the tube at the push of a button. Now if only there was a button that I could push that would cause everyone to like and subscribe. But I guess for now I'll just have to resort to begging. I'll see you next time.